text says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on the account of the works themselves. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. He bridges the gap. There is uncharted waters between our sin and God's righteousness. Uh, implied and inferred by God's uh, question when he said, uh, Adam, where are you? Yeah, that, that you are so far away from where I am right now. Where are you? And I'm saying to you that Jesus is that way. He bridges the gap. Paul tells Timothy, 1 Timothy says to him, I want you to understand that there is only one way to God. Through that man, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way. Then Jesus is the truth. Brothers and sisters, truth by necessity and nature is exclusive. Uh, you cannot say Two plus two is four, and two plus two is five. It must be one or the other. Christ is the only truth. He is the only one that reveals God to man. And we are thankful that God chose Christ to reveal himself and Christ says there is no one like me there is no one before or after me we hear in Hebrews chapter 1 where God writing through scripture says in times past spoke to the fathers by the prophets but in these last days, he's spoken by his son. There is no one else to listen to. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me see if I can put it on the bottom shelf. Brothers and sisters, I, I don't, I don't. You go through your collegiate setting, academia, move on to your um, graduate studies, post-graduate studies, every now and then you might need to do a world religion. 
But I don't care about other religions. Let me try it again. Um, I understand gravity keeps my feet on the ground. Jones, it's useless for me to speculate and have discussions about living in a world with no gravity. The truth is gravity exists. Now, now we can talk about uh, the different aspects of gravity, but to discuss gravity over against something else, useless. That's what Paul tells Timothy in the Pauline uh, writings there, the pastoral epistles. He says, stop arguing with people. Yeah, yeah, all of this talking is like gang green. It's just eating away at you brothers and sisters. Listen now, you don't have to argue with everybody who has a different view. The best thing you can do is live out what you already believe. All I want to talk about is Christ. I don't need somebody else little t truth with my big t truth. Did, 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 I, did I lose you there? You see, all relative truths have a little t. But the absolute truth, which is Jesus Christ, has a capital T. There is no truth but Jesus Christ. I don't need to look anywhere else. If I want to know who God is, I don't need to ask the Muslim. Oh, if I want to know who God is, I don't need to ask Allah. I don't, need to. I don't, I don't, I don't need to ask. I, I ask Jesus, who's already put it in his word. And I appreciate him for being the truth. And then I got to move on. He says, I am the life. Brothers and sisters, Christ embodies the source of life. And then he is the emancipator from death. You and I were dead in our trespasses. And the Bible says in 1 John 3, 8, the reason why Christ appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. And how did he do this? He, he took on flesh and died to destroy the power of death and the devil. That's why Paul asked this question, 1 Corinthians 15, 55, he says, <laughs> death, where's your sting? <laughs> You see, I, I told you before, uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with revenge. It just doesn't belong to you. Uh, God said, vengeance is mine. Death. <laughs> That's the best you got? Where is your sting? You, you see, the reason why death has a sting is because of unforgiven sins. And when Christ died for my sins... And I was forgiven, death no longer stings. What I'm trying to say is, when a person dies, if that was the only time I'd ever see them, that would be a great rub. That would be a sting in my life. And yes, it's painful when they die, but there's no sting. Because I will see them again. And yes, I want to tell you now, I'm not all that brave about dying. But grammatically incorrect, I ain't scared of death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not comfortable with how I get there. Yeah, I, I don't know whether it's going to be sickness, fire, gunshot, car wreck. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm not happy about that. But what I am happy about and what does not scare me is death. 
I, when I leave this place because of Jesus Christ, he is life. And that, that's what he says. He says, listen. He says, I'm going away. And he'd already told his boys how he was going away. He says, chief priests and the scribes, they're going to kill me. He says, I'm going away. But did you hear the hint to the resurrection? He says, I'm coming back again. Yeah. Oh, that's good news right there. He says, yes, I'll die. But you need to understand this. No man takes my life. He says, I lay it down. Death has no control over Jesus Christ. Oh, oh. The reason why is because of his eternality. Y'all didn't think I was going to skip over the I am statement, did you? That's number six of seven. He says, I am. Oh. We hear him speaking with Moses, uh, he says, Moses says to him, uh, when I talk to these people, who shall I say sent me? Exodus 3, 14, he says, tell them I am that I am. Yeah, yeah. And so every time we hear Jesus saying, ergo Amy, I am, he's saying, I'm God. Marie, that's what he's saying. He's saying, I am God. If you don't mind, just, just a little textual evidence. Exodus 3 and 4, the Bible says, Moses in Midian, mining Jethro's sheep, sees the burning bush. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord burned in the bush. And the angel called out to Moses and God said, let me try it again, let me try it again, let me try it again. Uh, let me give you a little key first. You see, the angel of the Lord is what we call a Christophany. It is Jesus showing up before he does so in the flesh. Let me try it again. So the angel of the Lord caught the bush on fire. The angel of the Lord called out to Moses and God said, I think Terry got it. Let me try it again. I, I'm trying to say you got the same person in one bush. <laughs> well, I, I wish you saw that with me. That the same person in one bush. And what Christ is saying when he's standing there, Jesus at the moment, in front of those boys, he says, I am. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Oh, he says, I am. The statement, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, you English people will enjoy this. This is an elliptical statement. You, you, you know how you, you, you write a sentence and uh, you can't use it in professional writing, but, but sometimes in narratives and, and writings of that nature, you. You, 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 you may write and you might leave out words and they're understood to be there. Sometimes you'll put three dots. Um, you, you, you might say, uh, Tannen has three cats. Tristan has two. What you're saying there is that what happens in the beginning also happens in the end. You, you, you can sort of leave out words and you might say, Tannen has three cats, 
Tristan 2. See how I left out a word? It, it, it's an elliptical statement. There are words that should be there, but are left out and is understood. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Stephanie, I said it is an elliptical statement. And what Jesus is saying is, I am the way because I am the truth. <laughs> I am the way because I am the truth and I am the life because I am the way. <laughs> He's saying, now look, now when we read that, we tend to think in terms of distinct terminology, the way, the truth, the life. Christ is saying, I am the life because I am the truth. I am the truth because I am the way. He's saying, now listen, I want you to understand that I am the way to the Father. If you're dead in your trespasses, I am the way. There is no other way. A missionary decided to take the gospel to Africa. And when he shows up there, he has his caravan and all of his people with him and makes his way out to a village. Once he gets to that village, the people who have brought him thus far, they said, the terrain is too difficult. We don't know it. And we're not going any further. The missionary spoke with the chief of that tribe and said, is there no one who can take me further. And the chief of the tribe pointed out a warrior who was marked with scars and battle wounds. He says, this guy will take you. They worked out a bargain. The guy stood up with his axe, and he and the missionary alone started out to that remote place where the missionary wanted to go. And initially, everything is fine, the path is wide, but before long, the jungle seemed to close in. And the warrior took his axe. And he's chopping away at branches and limbs. By this time, the missionary is getting worried. We, we're moving deeper and deeper into Africa. I'm alone out here with this guy. I've negotiated a price to get me to where I need to be. And the guy... The warrior kept moving and the missionary is concerned now. I, I, I don't see a path in front of me. And, and I don't see a path behind me. Finally, he says, hold up. He says, do you know where you're going? Do, do you know the way? The warrior straightened himself up turned around and said to the missionary, do you see the scars that I have? I got those scars making my way to the other tribe. He says, there is no way because I am the way.
Shonda, everybody ought to be shouting now. I want to tell you that we were dead in our trespasses. Lost in our sins. The world engulfed us and took us over. But there's a guy who has an axe. Uh, you old people will remember that he's a battle axe. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. There's a guy who's saying to you today, if you want to know the way to God, he says, I am the way. How do we know? How do we know that you are the way? He says, look at my scars. All I mean to say to you, if you are here and you don't know Jesus and you're trying to get to God, look at the scars. He died on Calvary. Listen, they put nails in his hand. They put nails in his feet and he died. And because he died, now you and I have access to the Father. You and I know the way yeah, because Jesus is the way. That's, that's, that's shout news to me that Jesus is the way. I don't have to look nowhere else. Jesus is the way. I don't need to hear about any other religion. Jesus is the way. I don't need to read about any other religion. Jesus is the way. And now, now that I'm already told you, now I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I can, I can make a little application and I'm done. See, I've already done my work now. I can just talk to you. I want to tell you now. Uh, since Jesus is the way, no. Uh, I want to say to you, I'm done. Listen, he keeps on making a way. I'm sorry. Oh, I wish I had a little time, and I'm over my time right now. But I just want to say that now that I know I'm going to heaven, uh, you know, I'm going to have some struggles here and some difficulties. But I want to tell you. That he keeps on making a way. Yeah. 